I'm just here to show you a little bit of the process of what I'm doing this morning. Um, and I'm starting off with pencil today, unlike pen, which I normally do. So um, if you'd like to know what um, reference picture I'm using, it's in my stories. If you'd like to take a uh, screenshot or I've given you the link, it's from Pixabay. Um, and you can use it for your reference as well. I love doing doors and windows so um, this morning I'm just easing myself in with a little sketch. Starting off with um, watercolours this time for a change because I think I'm missing watercolours. I've been doing a lot of sketching so um, I decided I'll do a little bit of watercolours first today and um, and then carry on with pen after that. So if you look at the reference picture, it's quite um, it's in a landscape mode, but I'm trying to make it a little bit more compact. So not doing a lot of details with the pencil, just marking the shapes in and. Um, And I'll probably do everything else in watercolours. And I'm going to start with watercolours now. So for the brush, I'm using um, medium sized size. Um, well, this is a mop brush. It's size zero. Or uh, you can even use size 10 as well. Starting off with the door and... Um, I don't think I'll be going with the right colours today. It's just one of those days where I want to play with watercolours. So let's see where it takes me. And I have no idea how they're going to turn out to be. Um, so it's just a little experiment. Um, so I'm starting off with some sepia. Maybe a little bit of red as well, just to bring in some colour. You can see how fiddly I am today. Um, um, maybe it's just me today, very fiddly. So I'm just going to make use of that energy onto this painting. I think this will look very moody today, but that's how it's going to be. So I've got sepia and um, maybe add a tiny bit of ultramarine with that for deeper colour. Ultramarine blue. And um, okay, so let's add some fresh um, Venetian red for the brickwork on top. So again, just placing the colour in. I need some green for the foreground. So for green, I'm using um, cadmium yellow and a little bit of um, Windsor blue, one of those bright greens. And maybe add some fresh yellow as well. Also trying to leave some um, white unpainted areas for highlights or I can even complete that with pen later on. OK, 
Okay, some more deeper green. So again, I just added extra blue into the mixture. I don't use um, ready-made green. I like mixing them. So this one is a mixture of um, cadmium yellow and um, winter blue. So just looking at the picture, I'm squinting my eyes to see the darker colors and probably place a little bit of dark green. So for dark green, I just added um, permanent red into the mixture to get me this very deep, dull green. And maybe leave some white. So, um, okay, so add a little bit of um, details here as well with the tip of my brush. Okay, now for the brickwork, you can see a lot of Venetian red and also some um, raw sienna as well. So I'm going to do like a mixture of those. So right now it's just um, blocks of colour and then I'll let them dry and then I can go over it with pen and perhaps another layer of watercolour or however that feels at that moment. Just getting some ochre or raw sienna. And um, I'm trying to be careful not to paint the whole area, block the colour out. So i um, leaving a little bit of uh, unpainted white areas. So doing a mixture of um, Indian red, or sorry, Venetian red, and um, a little bit of raw sienna as well for brighter colours. And that is all going to be um, brickwork on the building. A little bit of um, ultramarine blue in between just to give some depth in that colour. Also give some ultramarine blue here as well. Okay, so let's continue with a little bit more um, raw sienna. Just making texture of the brick already with the brush and then I'll go over it with the um, pen. For this post here, doing a little bit of raw sienna and also leaving some white as well. So just lifting out some colour. So now let's continue with some more green. So it's a mixture of cadmium yellow, um, Windsor blue and a tiny bit of permanent red just to deepen that tone.
and um, just starting off with the tip of my brush to create this leaf like or foliage like structure and then as I move into the deeper areas of that foliage I can use the whole body of the brush I think it needs a little bit more brighter shade here little bit more deeper green onto this side so just fixing this corner here and also splattering a little bit now for the roof it's sort of a grey colour so I'm going to use like a lot of ultramarine blue with a little bit of um, Indian red sort of give me a very grey but yet a little bit more vibrant grey just place that block of colour there And I'd like to get the green of the foliage and the roof colour to mix. So just adding a little bit of green here as well. And I like working wet and wet. It just gives me a lot of um, freedom to get those colours mixing together, bleeding into each other. And it looks a little bit more dynamic compared to when I normally use the pen first because I kind of restrict myself when I have the pen lines. maybe add a tiny bit of ultramarine blue onto that brush to add some um, some sort of shadow here I can add ultramarine in between here as well just for some shadow I haven't washed my brush so I still have a little bit of green on it and I'm just adding um, some ultramarine along with it Again, um, not thinking about details now, I'm really squinting my eyes to just see the darker areas and place that colour there. At this stage I'm not too worried about details or you know, what I'm really doing, it's just shapes for me right now. some vines here with the same blue and I think that's enough for now some final details um, a little bit more ultramarine blue 
it's got a tiny bit of uh, Indian red on it so it's not fresh ultramarine blue it's sort of a bit muddy and I'm using that for some texture here so just lines and perhaps mark some shadow as well. And the darker area here inside the window. And some shadow on the, um, the door as well. So just a few lines. Okay, so I'm stopping my watercolours now. Uh, I'd like this to dry and um, probably come back um, in an hour or so after it, after this has dried. So I'm back with the um, watercolour that I've been doing this morning and I have decided to start off with some ink. I'm using a dip pen, a mapping pen and um, Winsor & Newton brown ink. So the idea is to start layering with different types of ink or um, just one colour. I still haven't decided. It's very um, impulsive so I'm just going to go with the flow. So that's like um, some sort of wine on this corner and I love drawing vines, love the fact that there's a lot of uh, lines there. Maybe add some foliage with the same brown before I start using black ink. So the um, use of pen will give me the opportunity to do a lot of texture in my sketch. Um, so just adding anything that I feel is good. So I just changed my dip pen to a more broader one because the other one wasn't working for some reason. So I'm going to add a few uh, leaf-like structure using my dip pen and brown ink. So just some very lazy scribbling also looking at the reference picture I'm trying to squint my eyes so I can see the darker area uh, more clearly so I can use that to either do hatching to block out color from the darker area like that or I can even scribble over it. I like to do different layers over it. So just a little bit of darker area here as well. So if you're looking for 
the uh, reference picture that I'm using. It's in my stories and you can take a screenshot or I've even shared the link. Um, I took it from Pixabay which is a very nice site if you like to um, take some reference pictures from there. <coughs> So more scribbling for foliage here. I'm going to leave a little bit of um, painted areas here without any pen lines. So I don't want to overwork. I'd like to keep that colour there. And this is a little accident that happened with watercolours. So there's like a huge blob of um, water that I accidentally dropped here. But I kind of like the effect that it has made. And so I'm going to try and preserve it and see how that works. That's the thing with using watercolours. You will have no idea until you finish your work how it's going to look. Um, and I don't like controlling watercolours, I'm very um, fast with it and most of the time it will look very messy which is why most of my watercolours are not a success at all so that's something which I still need to learn I guess So highlighting this area here. <clears throat> so working very loosely as I'm coming to this side. I can still use the brown for the brickwork on the side. Just giving a little um, indication of brickwork here on the walls so just a few more bricks here okay so let's switch to some black ink you can either use black ballpoint pen or sketching pen. I um, don't like using any of those, so I'm going to go with my fountain pen. And maybe start doing the rest of the details in fountain pen. So just highlighting this post here. There's another little stump that's here, so I'm going to do that as well. So adding some black now, I think the black kind of um, brings out the highlighted area a bit more. So let's do a little bit of black. Again, scribbling, hatching. Any sort of hand movement that you like is fine. And I think each and every one's work will differ because of their hand movement. Just like our handwriting, your work is going to be looking really different in the end. <clears throat> so, trying to make a little bit more sense to the colours that's going on here. So maybe I'll add some more foliage just to define um, the bush in front and um, give some lines for the bricks as well. So when I'm a little bit confused and not sure what to do, I usually squint my eyes, try to look at the darker 
uh, shadow areas and probably fill that in. So yeah, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Maybe it'll be okay after some time. So I'm going to continue with the rest of the area. And continuing with um, some more brick-like um, structures. <coughs> also some leaf-like structures if you want to add them here. And I'm going to continue that in this side as well. So that is meant to be shadow, so that's where the foliage stops and this is all shadow. <coughs> so let's darken this here, the window. completely in the shadow so I'm going to use hatching again and um, And that's the rest of the window, just finishing that off. Okay, now outlining that window, adding brick details. now um, a little bit of bricks here as well and now a few more lines for the door um, so not a lot because I um, don't want to overwork with pen So adding a little bit of hatching lines here to highlight the bush in the foreground. And also add some brick detail. some lines for the roof now and there's a sort of a beam here Okay, so just quickly I'm going to go back into watercolours and add some more shadow just to bring some more life to just here under the roof and um, using ultramarine blue and a little bit of um, Indian red or you can even use permanent red. The reason why I'm using Indian Red is because I've used quite a bit of that um, here for the door and everything. So just going to stick to what I have been using, not um, using too many colours, keeping my palette limited. So 
adding a little bit of shadow here. So highlighting the um, foliage in front. Maybe a little bit of shadow here as well. There's some shadow here that's probably falling from a tree which we cannot see in the frame but it sort of brings um, life to this picture so I'm going to add those shadows So some more colour, mm, maybe darkening this side a little bit more. And um, just final touches now for shadows here underneath these bricks. And placing some darker colour here as well where I've done some cross hatching. So I like going back into watercolour and filling the gaps that I probably didn't do in the beginning. And for finishing touches, I'm going to grab some white gouache. A few splatters here just to highlight the foliage. Maybe a little bit on this side as well. And also highlighting a few bricks, just bringing out some colour. I couldn't leave this white so I'm going to go over it with a little bit of gouache. So just creating some texture on the door as well. So I think we're nearly done. I could su I could suggest um, a little bit of um, Ruth as well, but not a lot because I don't want to overwork. So 
so I'm doing it very rough and uh, so I think that's enough and then I can leave the rest to be completed by the viewer. So I'm done with the um, sketch that I started this morning. Um, thank you so much for joining me and uh, supporting me. Um, and I'll see you um, another time, perhaps tomorrow, with a new sketch. If you like to know more about how um, uh, why, how I do this and how I do my workshops, I have a workshop coming up um, on Thursday at 7pm UK time. Um, so if you'd like to join me, uh, head over to my uh, website. You can find the link in my bio.